Last week, we talked about the limit. This week and next week, we're going to look at the derivative. Now, the derivative is the most important thing we will talk about in Calc 1. And it covers, it and its applications cover two weeks of our four-week course. So that's half of a standard Calculus 1 class. Um, so it is very important. And we're going to see that we can use a limit to define the quantity we want. To get there, let's first look at a graph. Here we have a function, and here we have a point x marked off on the function. Our goal is going to be to figure out the slope of a tangent line at x. And we're going to see, um, after a couple graphs, uh, that fourth graph will include the illustration that we want. Um, but to define that, we're going to first observe that we can easily find the slope of another line. And this is another x value. Um, I'm going to call it x plus h. And we'll see why in a moment um, we use x plus h. We have right now two lines on, or two points on this curve. Well, we know through any two points, we have a line. So right here, we have a line, and in particular, it's a line we know the slope of. Uh, this line is called a secant line, um, not a tangent line, which remember, um, I said we're going to uh, eventually get to. But we know the slope of the secant line. We call it M S E C for secant. Slope of the secant line, change in y divided by change in x. The y value here, I'm going to use this one first. The y value here is f of x plus h. The y value here is f of x. So the slope of the secant line, change in y divided by change in x, change in x, x plus h over x, er, er, x plus h minus x. Um, that would be the change in x. But notice the x and the negative x cancel, so you're just left with h. So I'm just going to write that as h. And right here, we have the slope of a secant line. We want the slope of a tangent line, meaning the slope of a line that intersects this curve at only this point. Well, what happens to this secant line as we let this point get closer to that point. Well, let's look at uh, a couple more secant lines. So right here, we have uh, this other x value marked off. This is still f of x. I guess these should all probably be labeled f of x. We have two points. We have a line through those two points, a secant line through those two points, and we can find the slope. What if we move this point even closer to x? Well, we have another x value marked off. I intentionally did not mark off that x value. Um, we have two points. They define a line. And we can find the slope of that line. So what we're doing here is letting x plus h get closer to x. And if we continue that process, forcing this x value close to x, in the limit, it will approach the tangent line, which we want. So let's write that down. Letting x plus h approach x, we see, and I'm going to leave a a space here because I'm going to write something under that in a moment. We see that the secant line approaches the tangent line. Uh, tangent T A N G N T. Um, but letting x plus h approach x can be described using fewer variables. What is h in this case? h, well, this distance right here is x. This distance right here, this x-axis uh, distance, 
is x plus h. So if this is x and this is x plus h, then this distance right here is h. Well, what we're doing here, we're starting with h out here. Then we have h being this distance, smaller, and this distance until it gets infinitely close to x. So letting x plus h approach x is the same as letting h approach 0. Um, alternatively, you could use um, a limit observation subtracting x. Um, I like the uh, visual with the graphs a little more. So if we let h approach 0, where h is defined as this distance, the secant line will approach the tangent line. And in calculus, we want to know about the slopes of tangent lines. And we now do know about slopes of tangent lines. This might not fit on this board. Um, I wanted this to fit on that board, but I don't think it's going to fit, so... Uh, this will say m tangent, m-t-a-n, equals, well, we're describing this using a limit. It's the limit as h approaches 0 of the slopes of the secant lines. So the secant lines are approaching tangent lines. The, from that, the slope of the secant line will approach the slope of the tangent line. So it's the limit as h goes to 0 of the slope of the secant line f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And this right here will be the basis for what we do for two weeks, half of the course. So let's formalize that definition a little. Definition. Let f of x be a function. The derivative of f of x denoted f prime of x. So right here this is, it's kind of like a little bigger apostrophe f prime of x, and uh, this is just, uh, I wrote that so you know exactly how to read it. f prime of x is given by, well, f prime of x is given by the limit as h approaches 0, f of x plus h minus f of x over h. So it's um, the, lim the exact limit that we had before when finding the slopes of tangent lines. And this remark, very important, um, just combines this definition and our initial observations. f prime of x, the derivative, is the function that gives the slope of the line tangent to f of x at any x. So given a function, we want to find a new function. And this new function is going to give us the slopes of tangent lines anywhere. So if you have just some random function, and uh, let's mark off a couple x values, I guess. 2, 4, I guess. Well, f of 2, f of 2 is whatever, what, this y value is. f of 4 is whatever that y value is. But what's f prime of 2? Maybe I should move 4 a little so they look different. We can move 4. Uh, yeah, let's put 4 over here. Sorry about that. Um, what was I saying? f of 2 and f of 4 are given by y values on this curve at 2 and 4. What is f prime of 2? Well, f prime of 2, we look at a tangent line at 2. f prime of 2 is the slope of that line. Maybe the other 4 was better. Wow, I don't know what I was saying. Let's say 4 is here f prime of 4, I don't know why I moved 4, is whatever the slope of that line is. What's f prime of 0? Well, f prime of 0, we look at a tangent line at 0, so whatever the slope of that tangent line is. And this formula is going to give it. Now notice, if we want to find tangent slopes of tangent lines, which we do, we need to compute a limit. And notice through a direct substitution, this limit will always be a 0 over 0. So you'll have to do some algebra to compute the limit. So right here, let's do a few examples. I'm trying to 
tiny papers to balance up in the back of a chair. It wasn't working initially. Find f prime of x for f of x equals x squared plus 4. So x squared plus 4. We know how to graph that. Um, but here we want to find the derivative. So let's do it. Well, we need this limit. f prime of x equals limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Um, in these, sometimes I'm a little careless in writing my h's. Um, they are h's, lowercase h. Um, so we need f of x plus h. Well, what's f of x plus h? Um, I'm going to continue this limit computation here, but make a side note down here, and I'm going to erase the side note. What is f of x plus h? Well, f of x plus h, we look at f of x, we replace all x's with x plus h. So we have x squared plus 4 for f of x. f of x plus h, replace all x's with x plus h. You know, it's just like f of 3. Replace all x's with 3. You get 13 for this one. f of x plus h, replace all x's with x plus h. Um, I'm going to leave that unsimplified in this next step for now. We are going to simplify it in a moment. But f of x plus h is x plus h all squared plus 4. Minus f of x, well, minus f of x, we already know f of x. Make sure you subtract all of x plus h. Or f, all of x plus h. Make sure you subtract all of f of x. Well, now we have some algebra to do. Well, let's square this. What's x plus h squared? x plus h squared. Um, you could uh, write it as x plus h times x plus h and distribute. Um, or you can use the uh, what square formula, I guess. x squared 2xh plus h squared. Because I didn't have to write that there. I could have just written it where it belongs. We haven't taken a limit yet. Limit h to 0, x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. This 4 is still there, and let's distribute this negative. all over h. Well, notice now, x squared and negative x squared, those add to 0. So I'll just cross them out like that. 4 and negative 4, those add to 0. So we're left with just this limit. Limit as h goes to 0, 2xh plus h squared all over h. Well, if you let h equal 0, You'd get a 0 over 0. So, But notice, all three of the things in this fraction have h's. If everything has an h, you can remove an h from everything, because h divided by h is 1. So remove an h from everything. If you do that, take an h off of that. You have a 2x. Take an h off of that. You have an h. Take an h off the bottom. You have a 1 in the denominator, so I'm not going to write that. And now, it's simplified enough that we can let h equal 0 and do a uh, limit through direct substitution. And we're left with 2x. Well, that's what we needed. We needed the derivative, and we computed it using a limit. Now, what can we do with this? Well, this function gives the slope of the line tangent at any point. so. Well, we can now find equations for tangent lines. So let's do that. This computation is very important. Um, we'll, we'll see in the uh, next video, what point do I want? Five. That this computation has, um, well, we'll have formulas for this limit. But knowing the limit is important. It's a very important thing in calculus to see how the uh, derivative is defined using a limit. Um, example. Find an equation 
for the line tangent to f of x equals x squared plus 4 at x equals 5. Well, find, it, find an equation for the line tangent at a given point. Well, we need a tangent line. If we need a tangent line, we need a point and a slope. Well, the point is given by x equals 5. What's the y value? Well, I'm going to erase uh, this computation and just leave this bottom thing. f prime of x equals that. Well, let's look at a graph to find the point. What does a tangent line look like? Now, we know how to draw this function. Um, we'll be doing this for functions that can't be easily sketched. Um, I'm going to draw it kind of to scale. Uh, where are we? This right here is f, x equals 5, somewhere there. The tangent line at x equals 5 looks like that. Well, what is a point on that line? Because we want an equation for the line. We need a point on the line. Well, look right here. This point is on the line. That point is also on the function. So if we want to find the y value on that line, since the line and the function intersect at that point, we can use the function to find the y value. f of 5, 25 plus 4, so 29. How about the slope? Well, pretty tough to do with that graph, possibly impossible to do with that graph, but remember, f prime gives the slope of the line tangent to f at any point. Well, if we want the slope at 5, we need f prime of 5. f prime of 5, 2 times 5, so 10. We have the point, we have the slope, so an equation for the line tangent is what y minus the y value, y minus 29, equals 10, x minus the x value. That's a pretty bad y. Um, so we can use the derivative to find slopes of tangent lines. Um, let's do another. Uh, what's a good one? Let's do one with a cube. Yeah, that's a good one. x cubed minus 4x. x cubed minus 4x. I'm going to start over here. With this one, we're not going to find an equation for a tangent line. We're just going to find a derivative. Some of you may be wondering, will we always have to use the definition? meaning the limit as, f, as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. You will have to use it if you're asked, and you will be asked to do it on exam 2 and the final. That's guaranteed. Um, what did I say? Find f prime of x for f of x is x cubed minus 4x. I'm leaving that remark there for now. Um, I couldn't help but notice when I was talking earlier, the f in that f prime and the f on that uh, f of x look very similar. Not as similar to that f. Well, I guess I'll erase it. We don't need this remark anymore. Well, we do need it. Um, we'll need it for the remainder of the course, but we know it now. Uh, so where were we? Find f prime of x. Well, f prime of x is the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Well, what is this? 
f of x plus h, replace all x's with x plus h. So we have x plus h cubed minus 4 times x plus h. x cubed minus 4x, replace all x's with x plus h, x plus h cubed minus 4 x plus h minus f of x, subtract all of f, f of x, and that's all over h. Now, in simplifying this, well here we just distribute the negative 4, the negative 1 there, but we have to expand a cube. And you could write it out x plus h times x plus h times x plus h, um, multiply those two and then multiply what you get by that in combined terms. Um, there is a shortcut that you can use, but it requires a counting argument. What do I mean by that? Well, I'm going to set up a triangle and I should put a title on it because it has a name. Some of you may have seen this before. Pascal's triangle, P-A-S-C-A-L, it's triangle. Pascal was a uh, mathematician and a physicist, and I think he did some other things too. Um, he wasn't the first to use this, but it is attributed to him. Um, and we're going to start with three ones like that. A one in the first row, and then two ones in the next row like that. And we're going to use this to form more rows. And how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to start with a one and end with a one. But each entry between those ones is going to be the sum of the two numbers immediately above it. So here, two numbers immediately above this position are this one and this one. One plus one is two. Okay, let's do the next row. I'm going to erase this so, uh, well, I'm going to move it over so it continues to look like a triangle. The next row, start with a one. And with a 1, we're forming a triangle of numbers. And the remaining entries are found by adding the two numbers immediately above it. So right here, immediately above it, we have a 1 and a 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. Here, immediately above, we have a 2 and a 1. I mean, when I say immediately above it, it's more like in this direction and in this direction. But here, we have a 2 and a 1. Those added together make a 3. Let's form another row. Start with a 1, end with a 1. Right here, we have a 1 and a 3, which make 4. Here, a 3 and a 3 makes 6. Here, a 3 and a 1, which makes a 4. And let's do one more row. Start and end with a 1. Right here, we have a 1 and a 4, which makes a 5. Here, we have a 4 and a 6 makes a 10. Here we have a 6 and a 4 makes a 10. And here we have a 4 and a 1, which make 5. Now this, well, it keeps going. This um, triangular array of numbers has many applications in many branches of math. One of them is expanding a cube like this, something plus something else cubed, something plus something else to the 30th power if you keep going low enough in the triangle. Well, how can we do it? Well, we're doing x plus h cubed. Uh, I probably should have mentioned this is all side work um, so that we can continue the limit computation. x plus h cubed, well, what we do is look for the row where the second entry is a 3. Well, that's right here. And how do we use that? Well, 1, 3, 3, and 1 give us coefficients. And, uh, hmm. I hope this fits. Where am I going to put this? I'm going to put it down here, I guess. 1, 3, 3, and 1 give us the coefficients. Well, the sign, the uh, numbers, not necessarily the signs. 
Well, we don't have to worry about that. For us, they will give us the coefficients. If this were a negative, you'd have to do a sine argument, but it won't be because we have f of x plus h. Well, then what do we do? We look at the two entries, x and h. And how do we use them? Well, on the first number, we want, well, on each of the numbers, we want three total letters. And how do we do this? Well, on the first number, we're going to put three x's, so x cubed. On the second term, I should put plus signs between these. On the second term, on the second number, I should say, we're going to put two x's, so x squared. On the next one, we're going to put one x. On the last one, we're going to put zero x's. So we have these four numbers. They give us the coefficients. We look at this entry, and we start with three of them on the first term, and two of them on the next one, one on the next one, and zero on the last. And then we do the same thing with the h's, but in reverse order. So we're going to put zero h's here, and then one h there, two h's there, that's a terrible h, and three h's there. So notice we have a total of three letters on each term. We have three x's and zero h's, two x's, one h, one x, two h's, and uh, zero x's, three h's. Now this is pretty complicated, well, it's complicated looking because of all the ones that are written. Remember, something to the zero, as long as it's not zero, is one. And one times something we usually don't write. So here, we have one times x cubed times one. That just equals x cubed. Here, uh, we usually don't write one as the exponent. Um, we just um, interpret a single variable, uh, well, a single quantity as it being raised to the first. And similarly here, 3x h squared. And on this last one, we have 1 times 1 times h cubed. That should not be an equal sign. Looks like I forgot to hit shift. Um, so this last term is h cubed. And we can use Pascal's triangle to expand anything like that, something plus something else, to a number. One example, what if we had x plus h squared as in the previous uh, limit? Well, you look for where the second entry is a 2 equals 1, 2, 1. Let's move the 1 over, equals 1, 2, 1. Well, and then what do we do? Look here. We put two of those on the first thing, one of those on the next, zero of those on the last. Look at the other quantity, which is an h. We put zero here, one here, and two here. It always does that first thing in decreasing with decreasing exponents, second thing with increasing exponents. And of course, that simplifies to x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. I mean, so if you had like x plus h to the fifth, you'd use that row. Six terms, 1x to the fifth, 5x to the 4h, 10x to the 3h squared, and so on. But all of this was a way of uh, avoiding a uh, tedious multiplication. Um, as you do things with this, um, it does become more natural. I would recommend um, getting used to something like that, even though this is the only context that it will show up in for the entire course. Um, it is useful to go through that process. So where were we? x plus h cubed equals this. This I'm going to write it over here. x plus h cubed equals that at the bottom. So let's replace x plus h cubed with that. x cubed plus 3xh x squared h plus 3x h squared plus h cubed. And then we just have to distribute the negative 4 and the negative 1. So negative 4x, negative 4h, negative x cubed, positive 4x. And all of this, we haven't taken the limit yet, so we need to write limit. 
but all of this is still divided by h. Now, is there any simplification we can do? Yes. x cubed, negative x cubed. What else? 4x, negative 4x. And that's actually all um, that adds to 0. Um, yeah, I'll rewrite this. Sometimes I don't rewrite this next step. I just observe what remains all has an h, so you can cancel it. But I'm going to write the next step here. 3x squared h plus 3x h squared plus h cubed minus 4h all over h. And we notice if you let h equal 0, you're again going to get a 0 over 0. But you can cancel an h from each term. So this equals limit h to 0. We still haven't taken a limit, so we still have to write limit. Uh, cancel an h from everything. The denominator is just 1. First thing is 3x squared, then 3xh, then h squared, then negative 4. And now we can finally let h equal 0. We're letting h equal 0 because it says limit as h goes to 0. So this term is constant as far as h is concerned. You want to know more about that? Take calc 3. In other words, as h goes to 0, 3x squared goes to 3x squared. As h goes to 0, that goes to 0, that goes to 0, and negative 4 goes to negative 4. Because you can't, uh, well, as, as h changes, negative 4 doesn't change. So we used the definition to find the derivative of this function. Uh, what can we do with this? Well. I'll erase part of this. Well, let's do one other application of tangent lines. But here I'm not going to say find the slope of a tangent line. We're going to make an observation. Example. At which x values does f of x equals, what was that, 3, not 3x squared, x cubed minus 4x. Have a horizontal tangent. At which x values does f of x from the previous question have a horizontal tangent? Well, what does a horizontal tangent look like? Not drawn to scale. Although, not too far from scale. What does a horizontal tangent look like? Well, a horizontal tangent is a horizontal line that's tangent. So it can look like that. It can look like that. There are no other, in this sketch, which is not that function, there are no other places where the tangent line is horizontal. But what happens at these, or what is the slope of these horizontal lines? For both of them, the slope is zero. The slope of a horizontal line is zero, because there's no height change as x changes. So what we're really looking to do in this question is find where f prime of x equals 0. We want where the slope of the tangent line is 0. Well, we have f prime of x. So we'll do, uh, how do I want to write this? I'll write it over here. Um, so f prime of x equals 3x squared minus 4. And we want to set that equal to 0 and solve for x. Well, add 4 divide by 3, and take a square root. x equals positive negative 2 over root 3. So at those two x values, this function will have a horizontal tangent. Let's do 
one more of these. And then we'll make a couple observations. Find f prime of x for root x. Yes, you do have to use the definition if you're asked. And here, all we know how to do is use a definition. But in the future, we will know other ways of doing this. And if you're not told to use the definition, you don't have to. But if you are told to use the definition, you do have to, if you want credit. So root x, find f prime of x. Well, f prime of x, limit h to 0, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. What's f of x plus h? What's f of x plus h? Well, replace all x's with x plus h. What's f of x? Root x all over h. Now, how can we deal with this limit with square roots? Well, similarly to some limits we did last week, we can multiply by a convenient 1. And we're going to do the same thing. Multiply by the quantity with the square root, but change that sign, and divide by it. And we'll see, this will help us simplify. So we're going to multiply by that, and divide by that. Now, what does the numerator equal? Um, the denominator, we're not going to simplify. Might have drawn that line a little large. Oh, I guess I fit it on one board. I wasn't expecting that. Denominator, we're not going to simplify. What does the numerator simplify to? Well, we again use our difference of squares. Something minus something times that same first thing plus that same second thing is the first thing squared minus the second thing squared. First thing squared, x plus h. Second thing squared, x. The square root and square invert each other. So we um, didn't simplify the bottom, distributed the top, and now we have x minus x on top, while the x and the negative x add to 0. So x minus x is 0, We're left with just h on the top. And now notice you can cancel an h on the top and the bottom, because h divided by h is 1. So this is just uh, this limit now. Limit as h goes to 0 of 1 over root x plus h plus root x. And in none of these previous steps could we do a, simple, a substitution h equals 0. But now, if you let h equals 0, you will not get a 0 over 0. What do you get? You get 1 over root x plus 0 plus root x. So you have 1 over root x plus root x. And that, of course, simplifies to 1 over 2 root x. So the derivative of root x is 1 over 2 root x. Um, that's a useful one to have conveniently in your mind, even though we will learn another way to do it in the next video, uh, maybe two videos from now. I'm not sure how I'm going to divide them up. Um, let's do one more thing with this. Let's just find a, a tangent line. Find an equation for the line tangent to f of x equals root x at x equals, yeah, OK, let's make it a perfect square. Why not? x equals 16. Uh, that says tangent. Well, again, we need a tangent line, so we need a point and a slope. Well, the point is given by x equals 16, and y equals root 16. It's a 
function, so we don't take the uh, negative, we'll take just the positive. The slope, well, the slope is given by the derivative at 16. The derivative at 16 is 1 over 2, root 16. Root 16 is 4, 2 times 4 is 8. So we have our point and our slope, so the equation is y minus the y value equals the slope times x minus the x value. That one simplifies conveniently, but whatever. Um, so this uh, definition is very important. The derivative, which we'll be doing for two weeks, is a limit. It follows from limits, and the, the uh, limit computations we do, we have seen before. Um, before giving you some uh, formulas for the derivative, let's just give a little more notation. We're going to be looking at the derivative in many different contexts, and in some contexts, using a certain notation will actually be more illustrative and potentially more useful. Well, probably more useful if it's more illustrative. So for y, which is described by a function of x, each of the following denotes the derivative. So we used before f prime of x. We could also use y prime. We could also use any of these three, dy dx, df dx, or d dx of f. And all of these could be read the derivative of y or f with respect to x. Um, the derivatives we're doing, um, we will always use x as our variable. And um, remember, to define the derivative, we looked at the variable x and we used a limit to push a tangent line closer to a, uh, or sorry, to push a secant line closer to a tangent line. Um, so keeping the variable in mind in calculus will, in calculus one will always be assumed to be x. Um, in a calculus three course, you do things with more variables. Um, but the language derivative with respect to x is uh, very important to keep organized in your mind if you're going to be taking a Calc 3 course. And it's useful for some things in a Calc 1 course, we'll see. Um, now, this notation, dy dx, is probably the one I will use most frequently. And I'd just like to give a uh, diagram which uh, shows where that notation comes from. Um, We just look at a curve. Maybe I should make it open the other way. We have a curve like this. Well, how did we define the uh, slope of a tangent line? Well, we looked at the slope of a secant line. There's another way we could see the slope of a secant line. We could use a right triangle like that, where the legs give us a change in x and a change in y. Change, um, we use the Greek letter delta, which looks like a triangle for change. Um, so notice here in this diagram, the slope of the secant line equals the change in y divided by the change in x. So what's the slope of the tangent line? Well, remember, x is the variable we can control. x is the variable we're taking the derivative with respect to. So if we want the slope of the tangent line, we would let this x distance approach 0. Maybe I'll just write that down here. So the slope of the tangent line is the limit as the change in x goes to 0. So the limit as delta x goes to 0 of change in y. Well, maybe I should say of the slope of the secant line, change in y divided by change in x. and. Uh, a shorthand notation for that is given by these lowercase d, y, or lowercase dx. Um, so all of these notations will be useful um, throughout the semester. So um, I will focus largely on 
this one and f prime of x. 